In this video, we're going to be looking at uh, measures of size. We're continuing our look at descriptive statistics and measures of size. And we're going to look at an ogive and a Pareto chart. So first of all, what is an ogive? Well, an ogive is a relative frequency broken line graph. So here are the, again, the data for relative frequencies of the ages of the U.S. presidents at their first inauguration. And it starts at, uh, I started at 41. There weren't, were none at 41. So that was none below that. So that's 0%. When we went to 42, uh, that went up a little high. There was one there. And, uh, and then 43 and 44 and 45. And so this, this uh, 44, there weren't any because it, so it stayed the same as that. So what these are are cumulative frequencies. Of course, your data needs to be ordinal. Uh, a Pareto graph is an exception to this. I'll talk about what that is a little bit later in this same video. Okay. And so basically, it's a cumulative frequency broken line graph. It'll start at 0% and end at 100%. The scale over here could be frequency or it could be relative frequency. Well, the, the scale over here could be cumulative frequency or cumulative relative frequency and here the the here we have age as the horizontal I probably should put age down here age at first inauguration okay so let's see if you can make an ogive for this so let's make an ogive for uh, this data this is data that we looked at in an earlier video just some made up data for a distribution of some grades. And here's the table that we had worked out earlier. This table has the grade, the frequency, relative frequency, cumulative frequency, and cumulative relative frequency, all of which we've worked out in the past. So what I want you to do is get a piece of graph paper, a straight edge, and a pencil, and carefully construct a cumulative relative frequency ogive for this particular grade distribution. So cumulative relative frequency, so we're looking at these percentages or fractions over here. Okay, see if you can do that on your own. Press pause now. Well, this is what we should have here. Uh, sometimes we would have a zero down here, another line here going from zero up to here, but there's nothing below an F really. So we have 11% here. What is the 17% here? I actually added data labels on these as well. The 17% means that 17% of the people made a D or lower. 61% says people, 61% made a C or lower and so forth. 83% made a B or lower and 100% made an A or lower, of course. So that's an ogive. It's a cumulative frequency, or in this case, cumulative relative frequency broken line graph. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is the Pareto chart. Now, Pareto chart is used for nominal data. Now, remember that nominal data, there is no inherent order. It's used for just nominal or categorical data. It's categories only. So, uh, yeah, so technically speaking, I guess the bar shouldn't actually touch here. But what should we, what are we going to do here? Well, we can put them in any order we want. So what we're going to do is we're going to put these in an order that's decreasing in order. Okay. And so uh, notice that in this case, we're taking the count of, um, we got a bunch of items that have some kind of flaws in them. 15 of those, the flaw was a peel. Something was peeling. Uh, maybe the paint was peeling off. 13 of them had a scratch. Six of them had a smudge and six were other. Actually, the other should always be the last, last one. And sometimes the other could be the last one, even if it's a little higher than the ones before. Sometimes we put the other at the end. Uh, but if it's way higher than the rest, that other should be probably broken apart and detailed uh, what it is. So this is a bar graph, a frequency histogram or bar graph 
for nominal data in decreasing order of heights of the bars. Some people will just call that a Pareto chart, but generally a Pareto chart also has a ogive with it. Now remember an ogive usually you have to have some order, but in a Pareto chart the order is just the the order of decreasing frequency. But then otherwise it's it's an ogive. So it starts at zero percent. Once we get to peel, we're at fifteen, which is here. Okay, which is thirty seven point five percent of the total. When you get to scratch, the height is the same as just taking the height of this bar and stacking this one on top of it, which is a height of 13 on the left scale. And over here, we see a percentage scale. So we can see that 70% there. Uh, now, actually, this should be smudge and then other. Uh, they're both six, so it doesn't really matter. We'd be at 85% here, and then the last 15% uh, uh, to get us up to 100% would be the other. And notice then that ogive then goes from 0 to 100%. Okay, so this type of thing is used a lot in manufacturing to help identify the most important problems. And this brings up something that we sometimes call the trivial, uh, the significant few and the trivial many. Because a lot of times there's one or two maybe three problems that account for most of all of your problems. So what do you do? You focus your attention on those one or two big problems. If you can fix those, that's going to get uh, fixed more than anything else. Okay, and then you redo an analysis like this at that point, and now you'll see that bar is now much smaller and something else becomes the more significant problem. So looking at this chart, let's see if you can answer these questions. Which two types of flaws account for most of the problem? And together, what percentage of the flaws do they make up? Press pause if you need to. And answer the question. Well, peel and scratch are the two biggest ones. They're going to be the first two bars. And together, they make up 70% of the problem. So what should we do? Well, if we can focus our attention on fixing uh, the peels and scratches to where they don't happen, we will have taken care of 70% of our uh, defect problem. So that's a Pareto chart. Now, you can actually get even more information if you can dig a little deeper. And if we have these things, maybe, maybe this particular company has maybe four shifts. And we can further, further analyze this. Now, if you have some statistical software, such as I used uh, Minitab for this, other software, uh, you can do similar things with it, SPSS, for example. And I can further look at the data and get Minitab to produce this diagram. Now, this diagram is actually four different Pareto charts. They're all done by, but they're, but they're isolated by the, the period, by the shift. So we have the, day sh the night shift, the see, day shift, evening shift, night shift, and the weekend shift. So we got four different groups of people doing these things. Now, in this case, when you break it about the, uh, in the subcategories, the bars are not ordered in decreasing order for that category, but they're rather in the order that we had uh, over here on the previous one where they're in the overall decreasing order. So all of them will have peel first and then scratch, for example. Now, if you look at this, I think you can uh, maybe reach some further conclusions. And the vertical scale is the actual count rather than a percentage. So here, let's see if you can answer these questions. Which shift has the most overall defects? Is there a difference in defects by shifts? And if so, explain. And how do they, what could they do to improve their product? Press pause and analyze this a bit. Well, you can see because this is the highest up, the heights of the bars are taller and it ends up at a higher spot here. There are more overall problems with the night shift than any of the other shifts. It has uh, 19 
uh, defective parts on the night shift, whereas the others are all in the in the neighborhood of about seven. Now notice that the day shift is relatively low in peels, and the weekend shift has no scratches at all. Interesting. Even though these are the over all the two most common problems. And why are they? It's because there's so many peels and scratches here in the night shift and quite a few peels in the evening shift. Interesting, huh? So what could they do to, to uh, fix their problems? Well, what if, if I were doing this, I would look at the uh, weekend shift and say, well, what are you doing to completely eliminate scratches? Okay, let's see if we can find out that. Or the day shift, what are we doing to keep those, uh, what is it, peels down as slow as possible? So that's, uh, they're, they're having relatively few fewer peels than anybody else and um, fewer than they do, they're having with other problems. So if we could figure out what they're doing, then we can maybe come up with a training program and put everyone through the training program is starting with the night shift, which is the biggest problem. And hopefully from that we can come up with something that will help be helpful. Okay, I think we already have that slide. All right, let's see if you can construct a Pareto chart. Okay, so here's another manufacturing situation where we have uh, several types of defects, blemishes, scratch, chip, bend, dent, and then all the others put together. You are given the counts, okay? Determine the percentages, that is the, the relative, so you're given the frequencies. Determine the percentages, which are the relative frequencies. And then the cumulative percent, the cumulative relative uh, frequencies. And use that information to make a Pareto chart. So get out some graph paper, work through this carefully, draw a really good Pareto chart for me. When you're done, come back and check your work. Press pause now. Okay, well, first of all, we total up the count to be 150. Divide each of these numbers by 150, we get these numbers, 37%, 30%, 15%, at least round it off. And then we accumulate the percentages, 37% for the first one, 37 plus 30 is 67. Uh, 37 plus 30 plus 15 is 83, or in other words, 67 plus 30 is... Uh, no, I'm sorry, 67 plus 15 is 83%, and so forth, ending with 100%. Now, uh, we need to put these in order from largest to smallest, if they're not already. In this case, they already are. So we, we draw a bar graph with the blemishes first at uh, a count of 50 zigs, or a percentage of 37%. The scratches are next with a percentage of 30% and so forth, and I end with others down here. Then the bars, then the, that's the, the decreasing bar graph. Now, let's look at the percentages, uh, which are the, the cumulative percentages, which starts at zero here, and then we go to blemishes here. Blemishes and scratches together make up 67%. So they're over half of a problem for sure, those two together. Then we, so they're the significant few, the trivial many are the chips and the bins and the dents and, and others. And notice that, but as we do our ogive here, that's a part of our Pareto chart, we end up at 100%. Very quickly, I want to talk about one more type of graph, and that is a time series plot. A time series plot has a, has a has time as the horizontal or input variable. So here we have time, here we have the year, and vertically we have uh, whatever it is we're measuring. So in this case, again, we're looking at the ages of U.S. presidents at first inauguration, but we're looking at them through time from, from Washington here, Adams, and so forth, ending with, uh, say, Obama here. And we have this, and we have to look at this and see if we see any particular pattern. I didn't see anything that was really striking about that as far as a pattern, but we might look at that and see if there is a difference.
sort of pattern that occurs.